that's the, the main question. And I introduce the first speaker. I ask all speakers to be brief. We said 10 minutes uh, so that we have time to discuss within the panel, but also with you. Uh, first speaker is uh, Philippe Chalmin. Uh, Philippe is what you could call a walking encyclopedia <laughs> uh, on critical raw materials. Uh, since 37 years, uh, he publishes uh, an annual report on the status of critical raw materials. So long before it became a political issue, a heated issue, he was an expert on these questions. And I think there's hardly anybody else, at least not in Europe, who knows more about critical raw materials than Philippe, who was a professor at Paris Dauphin, and, uh, uh, well, who is a, a great guy, and we are proud to have you. The floor is yours, Philippe. Well, thanks very much. Uh, besides, I would say, I don't think I'm real expert on critical raw materials. Christophe Poinceau is probably for that far better than me. Uh, in fact, uh, Cyclop, we are publishing a, a commodity yearbook, so we cover all kinds of commodities. Uh, also, sometime we might be wrong. Exactly one year ago, we were just in this place, or the hotel uh, on the other side, and I told you that among the most bullish commodities we had in uh, 22 were what I called uh, the electric materials, that were lithium, the nickel, graphite, and some others. One year later, November 23, we have seen a complete reverse. Among all commodities, uh, be it energy, agricultural, minerals and metals and the rest, the worst performance on world markets in 1923 has been for lithium. And lithium has lost around 70% of its value, coming from roughly $75,000 a ton to $25,000 more or less, still slightly more than it was in 1920. Nickel, which was completely foolish in 22, reaching at some time in the uh, early time, in the uh, Asian hours, uh, more than $100,000 per ton, nowadays is around 18,000. Even graphite, and we have much spoken about graphite those last uh, uh, two weeks uh, because of the quotas set up uh, uh, by the Chinese government. But before that, the price of graphite had been declining this year by 30%. Same thing for cobalt. Cobalt uh, uh, used to uh, be somewhere between 50 and 80 cents per pound. Now it's hardly between 17 and 18, and it reached even a low of 13 cents per pound uh, some months ago. In fact, the only all of, of all those metals which behaved, I would say, a bit more positively was copper. Uh, also, last year we were around $10,000 per ton. Now we are hardly around 8,000. Let's be frank, be it electric metals, criticals, strategic, or just uh, common non fuels metals, all metals markets are, have been declining in uh, this recent year. Why such a situation? Of course, we have seen uh, in many uh, derivatives markets a kind of end of a speculative exuberance. And it must be stressed, well, the prices I gave you uh, for lithium, for cobalt, are on some very opaque markets. And so uh, sometimes uh, you really have uh, exuberant uh, prices without links to reality. Also, it must be stressed, 
that in many cases, uh, anticip anticipated demand, especially coming from the battery industry, hasn't yet materialized because, as you know, uh, an industrial process is something which is quite long uh, to put in place. In fact, when I look at forecasts for 1924, what I see are mainly surpluses. The International Copper Study Group anticipates a surplus of 500,000 tons of copper out of a world demand of around 25 million tons. For cobalt, we know there are huge stock in the uh, DRC in Congo. And uh, uh, for nickel, uh, with the development of Indonesian production, uh, we are more or less assured to have a market in surplus for the next three years. What a contrast, what a paradox, would I say, uh, with what we hear uh, on a long-term basis. On a long-term basis, we still see the same analysis, that is, reports on growing demand, linked, of course, to green transition. By 2030, that is more or less tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, copper and nickel demand should grow by 70%, cobalt by 150%, and the demand even for graphite and lithium should be multiplied by six or seven. By 2030, we should, we could have, we should, no, we could, we might have deficits of 10 to 50 percent of, 10 to 15 percent of demand for a couple or nickel, 30 or 45 percent for other uh, metals. And as you know, and you uh, said it, governments have been for all this year frantically searching for mines and resources, be it in the US, be it in the EU, uh, and still China remains on many markets the key, uh, and China used its power to put uh, some export quotas. That's the great news of the year. We had uh, export quotas this summer for germanium and gallium, and uh, just a fortnight ago for graphite. May I remind you that for the moment when you have a battery, its anode is in graphite, and China is uh, uh, producing around 70% of world graphite, be it natural or synthetic. Of course, as I told you last year, all those forecasts, we must take into account the fact that we don't know, and there is a factor which we don't master, which is technological progress. You frankly don't know what there will be in batteries in 30 years' time what kind of energy we will use, how we will manage to stock electricity and the rest. In fact, and I would like to use my remaining time just to get away from the critical raw materials as such and to tell you that, to my mind, the most critical of all raw materials, and in fact for the whole century, the most difficult one will be copper. Copper, I would say, more than ever. Because copper, it's the green metal par excellence. Today's demand, I told you, is around 25 million tons. By 2035, estimates range between 40 and 50 million tons. And, uh, and well, just to tell you, an average Westerner, uh, uh, needs about 200-250 kilos of copper. An average inhabitant of this world uh, uses 60 kilos. So you have a huge demand coming, and to meet that demand, you can, of course, go in recycling scrap, but you reach sometime very quickly some limits. Then you can reuse mine waste uh, with lower content. And, of course, you can have new mines. But new mines, it takes 15 to 20 years, average 17 years, to develop a new mine, uh, be it in copper or anything else. And the capital costs are huge. Just let me give you an example. Uh, 
Tech Resources Canadian company has a big project <coughs> in uh, Chile, Quebrada, Quebrada Blanca 2. Uh, it should produce around 300,000 tons of copper per year. The project uh, projection of cost in uh, uh, 2019 was $5 billion. Now it's $9 billion. First Quantum, another uh, Canadian comp uh, or US company, um, is active in Panama. The project of Panama Copper uh, is worth $11 billion. It is just now blocked by the Panamanian authorities. And uh, just uh, last week, uh, First Quantum Market Cap lo lost $6 billion on uh, Toronto uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, in fact, many new projects are barred by political environmental concerns. And we have the same Greens which, uh, um, who uh, are advocating energy transition and who are blocking a new kind of new mine. Copper, in fact, for me, uh, we'll speak probably of other metals, lithium, rare earth, etc. But the true strategic metal uh, of the 21st century, and in fact the true strategic commodity of the 21st century, I think it will be cobalt, uh, it, it, sorry, it will be copper, and uh, it's a reverse to ancient times. Recently I was uh, in the south of Spain in Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto has, is uh, probably the oldest uh, functioning mine coming back to the Roman times. At that time, copper was used with tin to make uh, bronze and to, uh, uh, and to uh, uh, manufacture spades and so on. Well, uh, it was also the key mineral of the Industrial Revolution. I'm pretty sure it will be exactly the same for the 21st century. Economists will say uh, copper used to be a good economic indicator when we're uh, speaking of Dr. Copper. Well, I do think that Cop Dr. Copper is back right now. Thank you so much uh, for, for uh, bringing us directly into the volatility of the uh, prices of the uh, markets of the speculation and uh, which makes it even more difficult for for politicians and uh, administrations to well really take the right decisions i think that was a, a very good start